I would be lying if I said that I have not been putting off this video because I have and the reason why is because for whatever reason it scares me sharing with you guys the fact that I am trying not to buy things and then I was thinking about it in fact I've been thinking about it all year for the past 13 days right now and it made me realize that is exactly why I needed to make this video because I need that accountability and if I fail then at least you guys can see that it's okay to fail and when you fail publicly yes it's a bit more shameful but sometimes having that bit of guilt is a good thing because it motivates you to do better and to stick to your word because in the end the person that you are letting down the most is yourself so here we are welcome to today's video guys today i wanted to talk about my low buy year and my plan for 2024 so if you are new here hi my name is marissa i make videos all about minimalism and homeschooling and motherhood so like and subscribe it does help my channel i'm sure you guys have heard about a low buy year if you're watching this video but just in case you have not Basically, a low buy year is when you set yourself certain boundaries and limits with the things you were going to buy for a certain period of time. So originally I wanted to do a no buy January, but I don't know why, but the thought of not being able to buy anything for a whole month, it really put me off. And so that's why for this past two weeks, I've been contemplating and trying to figure out how this is going to work for me. And I am deciding to do a low buy year instead. For whatever reason, having limits throughout the year, but still being able to buy things, just it appeals more to my personality. So some people go really hardcore and they do no buy years, no buy months, no buy weeks, where they absolutely cannot buy anything for whatever reason they choose to. So I am choosing to do a low buy year for the year of 2024 for a few different reasons. One, like I mentioned, I do make videos all about minimalism. And for so many of you, I'm sure when you look at my home and my videos, you probably think you're not even a minimalist and I get it I have a lot of things but the way that I view minimalism is not having an excess amount of things or things that have no purpose in my home and so what I want to do is I want to spend my money and purchase things in a more intentional way while still living out my value of not wasting things and using and purchasing items that bring me value that help free up more of my time that help make my day-to-day -day life easier I think when you spend your money on things like that it's worthwhile and it's good one reason why I'm doing this low by year is to minimize the amount of things I bring to into my home. The less things I own, the less things I have to manage and therefore the more mental space I have for my family and of course the more time I have. Number two is to of course buy more intentionally so I am really thinking about the things I am purchasing so that they last longer as well because I'm more inclined to buy quality pieces if I have given myself permission to buy it and then of of course I want to save some money the way I have planned out my low by year is I have given myself a list of categories where I can purchase things within those categories number one is fitness now I have separated fitness with health and beauty so my first category is fitness if you don't know I have been well I was a personal trainer and fitness coach for many years nearly a decade I'm no longer working as a PT however fitness is still a major major part of my life I still work out every single week fitness needs its own category for me then we have health and beauty so that is when my supplements go into there obviously beauty products like skincare and makeup and stuff like that that is all in health and beauty then i have clothing and accessories i am newly postpartum and this is the heaviest i have ever been so while i have a goal of getting back to my pre-baby weight as most of us do i am learning how to dress my body and i also want to to be comfortable in my clothes so I am building up my capsule wardrobe and so I do have a lot of items that I already know I want to buy because I ha have kind of figured out a lot of gaps in my current wardrobe then we have homeschool because I do homeschool my children that 
is its own category in itself and then the last category is home decor and household things so these are not essentials like cleaning products and stuff when it comes to home decor this is like extra items i have given myself a list of what i can buy and it's so minimal like i'm very happy with that so just a quick disclaimer guys this is obviously a low buy for me maybe with the amount of stuff i am allowing myself to buy for you you're like that is so excessive how ridiculous what is the point in doing a low buy but for me i find that i tend to shop a lot in my mind i feel like i don't but at the end of each month when i go over our budget i have ended up buying things and so this will be a low buy for me because i'm actually giving myself restrictions which is something i have never done before so you do you but this video is going to be sharing my own boundaries and restrictions that i am setting for myself this year also regarding that i'm not going to include our family's combined purchases if that makes sense the boundaries i've set myself are only for the areas of my life that i am responsible for let's talk rules the rules i am giving myself first up is probably the most popular one i am allowing myself to buy replacements of anything that i need so whatever i have in my house in my cupboards in my wardrobe i am allowing myself to buy replacements if those things break if they get worn out or if i end up decluttering an item because i find i'm not wearing it or using it i am allowing myself to repurchase a replacement item instead my second rule and the only other rule is that i do need to stick to the budget that i set myself for those items that month so for example if it comes to february and i've set myself a clothing budget of 200 dollars then if i do purchase something in my list that i am allowed to buy this year it needs to be within that budget that i've set myself for that month at the end of this year i am going to be making another video sharing with you guys how i went what i really struggled with what i learned and all of that kind of thing so make sure you guys subscribe if you want to see if i fail or not if this video is a bit choppy i apologize i have so many kids coming in and out and talking in the background so i'm sorry if you can hear that for example right now okay so let's get into the fun things here are the things that i have listed out the items that i know i want to purchase most of the things are physical products but i do have a few other things as well so first category is workout or fitness First up, I am allowing myself to buy a new workout outfit. So that means a new bra, a new set of leggings, a new top if I need that, as well as a new pair of runners. I'm wanting to take up running this year. I've never been a runner, never run longer than a kilometer in my life. Um, and that is a goal that I just want to do. So I am allowing myself to buy a pair of new runners. Then I also use sports supplements. So pre-workout I'm allowed to buy and protein. I have estimated that to be about a grand for the year. It's a lot of money, but um, I've just always used those products. And then the last thing is my gym membership. So my gym membership for this year is just under $1,700. I just thought I would mention that because that is something I am spending money on, but it is like a weekly fee. Then we have beauty and health. So I am allowing myself two haircuts in the year. For the last like forever, I have always only gotten one or two haircuts in the year. My hair grows really fast, but it is quite healthy. So two haircuts. Then I am also allowing myself to buy two hair dyes. I always dye my hair myself because I tend to go darker. So as you can see, I have like these, my hair tints in the sun and it goes orange. And I feel like it just washes me out a lot when my hair gets quite orangey, coppery. And so I am allowing myself to buy black or dark brown hair dye. Then we have supplements, my multivitamins, my probiotics. I take magnesium, all of the health things. I'm allowing myself to buy. Now, most of these things are replacements, but if I wanna buy like a new probiotic or something, I am going to purchase that because health is a big value of mine. And then the last thing in beauty and health that I am allowing myself to spend money on is I am actually starting to get varicose veins in my legs, which is really depressing. I am not even 30 yet, and there's nothing wrong with getting older and all the changes that happen with your body as you do get older. But my legs have always been my pride and joy. 
they're just my favorite part of my body and so the fact that I am getting a lot of spider veins, I don't even care about the spider veins, it's more my varicose veins because they are quite thick and I can actually see where more are going to end up coming. So I wanted to get them under control ASAP and so I have started looking into that, nothing set in stone, but that is something that I am allowing myself to spend money on if I do get the opportunity to get them taken away. I think they laser it off. So that is my beauty and health section. Now remember, I can buy replacements. I am extremely minimal with my makeup. My foundation is just about to run out, so I will be replacing that, but I'm pretty certain everything else other than mascara, I'm likely not going to buy anything this year. So let's talk clothing and accessories, which is the category that I'm most excited for this year because like I mentioned, I am building up my capsule wardrobe. I'm also getting older. So my style is slowly changing and I'm stepping into like my more adult self, like Marissa as a woman. I feel like I can now call myself a woman because because for whatever reason, for all my 20s, even though I have six kids, it's just, I always just thought of myself as like a young, a young adult, like a hip, cool girl, but I'm definitely not anymore. Not that I ever was, but you know what I mean. The first thing I am allowing for myself to spend money on regarding clothing and accessories is a color analysis. So I have recently delved into the color analysis world, which is so interesting to me. If you guys do not know what I'm talking about, you need to go and Google the color analysis seasons and figure out what your season is. Since I've discovered this, just everything makes so much sense to me and it's gonna be really excited about personal style and learning how to dress myself and do my makeup and everything. So I do wanna get a personalized color analysis this year. It does cost a lot of money. Um, my sister-in-law recently got her done at the most basic level which costs $250 Australian but the one I want is about 500 so I'm thinking for my 30th I'm going to ask my hubby to get me that we'll see we'll see so that is the first thing and then I'm allowing myself to buy five new pieces of clothing now remember a lot of the clothes that I have and that I love I actually stored away because I can't fit them yet I need to lose like a good at least five kilos in order to squeeze into them but they are pieces that I know I will love I'm just waiting to rewear them so they are stored away but I am allowing myself to buy five new pieces whenever the time comes maybe next month or at the end of the year first one is dressy shorts I love denim shorts and I basically have one pair that I wear all the time but I do want more dressy shorts maybe linen or something lightweight because we live in a hot climate all year round the second one is lightweight summer pants like I said my varicose veins and my legs are looking older I should say they are aging and if you're like 40 years old and you rock short things you go girl like that's all for you but I'm not feeling very confident wearing short things anymore so I am wanting to invest in some lightweight summer pants then I have been eyeing off these jumpsuits I have really nailed my words when it comes to my style it is casual classic and clean jumpsuits are the most casual you can get they are like these baggy it's from free people you guys have probably seen them around especially if you're in the states i love them and that is exactly how i dress especially for my lifestyle i'm always out and about it's really hot so while they are long they're covering my legs but they're very lightweight and they're easy for me to run after my kids in so I do want to buy two of those. Um, and then I also want a pair of black jeans because that's something that I don't have. I'm allowing myself to get two pairs of shoes and I already know what they are. Number one is black Birkenstocks. Again, casual, classic. You can't get more classic than Birks. So I am wanting to buy them. And then I also want a pair of black sandals. I already know which ones I'm getting. Um, they're from Bellini. I'll link them below actually if you guys are interested in looking at them. But they're so nice and I want to get those. Then I'm allowing myself to get one hat and one bag. I already know one of them is a straw hat for the summer. Again, we live in really hot, sunny weather. And then I also want to get a straw bag. I just feel like that will go with everything I wear. And then the last thing is new jewelry. So I do want a silver, simple, dainty necklace with a little circle. It's so common and popular, but that's just something I've wanted for years and I've never invested in that. So if the budget allows this year, I will be purchasing one of those. I also want an anklet. I don't know why, I just want an anklet. And I also want a new ring. Next 
is homeschool. Now this is really easy. I have bought the majority of the curriculum for this year. I have two kids who are homeschooling with me this year. So I've already purchased all of that at the end of December. However, I am giving myself a budget of $50 a week for everything. So that's not including the kids sports fees. So for example, my son plays footy and one of my daughters is starting a nature uh, preschool once a fortnight. The $50 a week does not include their things. However, it does include all supplies or resources, any extra things if we go to co-op. So the 50 a week is going to fall into that. And when I say 50, that is the upper limit. I'm not going to spend more than $50 as best as I can try. Okay, and the very last category is home decor or my home. <sighs> Let me move my laptop. So I already know what I wanna get. I do really wanna purchase two lamps. I already know where I'm getting it from for my bedside tables. I read a lot and so not having light at night is really annoying me. The second thing I know that I want to purchase is an apron. So I do have an apron, but it's like a chef's one and it doesn't actually cover me enough because I still wear oil stains on my clothes like on the sides and so I'm wanting to get one of those really nice aprons from Etsy and that's about $50 so I already know that those are the two things I really want to purchase. Now the last thing that I may potentially buy that I'm hoping to thrift and find them is clothing baskets for the bedrooms this is something my husband has asked me to purchase so that is something I will be on the lookout for but it's not really something that I really want or need in my opinion but my husband does want that so those are the three things that I am no I'm forgetting one sorry the last thing for my home is Christmas decor specifically ornaments so if you guys saw my most recent decluttering video I actually got rid of a lot of our Christmas baubles and ornaments because they were glass and ceramic and with a lot of little kids it just wasn't safe um, it didn't look nice on the tree because it would pull the tree branches down so I donated those and so this year I will be on the lookout for new ornaments to decorate our tree with and maybe a bit of greenery as well. That is my list of items that I'm hoping to buy this year. Everything else I'm not going to buy. These are boundaries and limits I have set myself for those specific categories. Things like purchasing a coffee when I go out with my kids on a play date. I'm allowing myself to buy things like that. Like I don't have restrictions on that. I don't have restrictions on how much we are going to give. As Christians, we believe in giving as much as you can uh, within reason to help the less fortunate and of course to support our church and stuff. So there are still other things I'm going to be purchasing. But when it comes to the categories of fitness, clothing, um, my home, you know, all the categories I listed, those are my boundaries and limits that I'm setting myself for this year. I'm 85% certain I can stick to my list, but like I said, at the end of the year, I will make another video and break everything down and let you guys know exactly what I bought this year in those categories. I am going to make a list of every single thing I buy in those categories and I will let you guys know. If you guys are doing a low buy year yourself, I would love to know in the comments below. Let me know the rules and boundaries that you have given yourself. Let me know if you've done this before. This is all completely new to me. And so while I'm scared, I'm also really, really excited as well. So with that, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you are completely new to minimalism or essentialism, then please go ahead and watch a bunch of my decluttering videos or my other minimalist based videos. I will leave a lot of them linked below. Next week's video is going to be how to become a minimalist or minimalism for beginners. I'm about to film that right now. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.